Hey everyone, in this video, I want to talk about native SFTP, so FTP over SSH in Azure using Azure storage accounts. As always, if this is useful, please go ahead and like, subscribe, comment, and share, and hit that bell icon to get notified of new updates. So SFTP is still very widely used by a lot of different applications when they need that secure ability to transfer files. And up until this point, there's not been a native solution in Azure. If I wanted to support SFTP, I would have to maybe stand up a Azure IaaS virtual machine running some piece of software, maybe something from the marketplace that was a virtual appliance. But now with this new capability, it becomes a native part of the blob type service of Azure storage accounts. Now today it's in preview, so you have to go and register for this. The type of storage accounts it supports, if we think about a storage account, remember there are many types of storage account, there are many services supported. So if I want block blob, I can either use that general purpose V2, or if I want premium, then there's actually that block blob type storage account. So that's when I want premium. So both of those are supported for the SFTP. Today for the preview, for the resiliency, i.e. the replication, this is LRS, so locally resilient, so three copies within a certain data center, or ZRS, so those three copies are distributed over availability zones, but in the same region. And what I need to make sure is I've enabled that hierarchical namespace. So the hierarchical namespace is what gives Blob true folders. Without that, when I do folders in Blob, they're just virtual directories. It's really just part of the name. But when I add that hierarchical namespace, which is an option when I create the storage account, now it has true folders. That's part of the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 that leverages that. If I was to actually go and look at a storage account for a second, what we can see is I'm looking at my SFTP enabled storage account. And the key thing we're looking at right here is this hierarchical namespace is enabled. And again, when you create the storage account, that's an option for you. But that, that's really the only thing I have to be doing. There were no additional limits or anything imposed when I use the SFTP. So what I can think about is ordinarily, when I think of Blob, what we actually have is there's different types of service. So a storage account, yes, it has, and I'm gonna focus really on block blob. But obviously there's things like tables, there's queue, and there's files. Now for block blob, we have different types of API. So there's just the regular blob REST API. When I turn on that hierarchical namespace, then it lets me actually use that data lake API as well. Also, if I turn on hierarchical namespace, there's an option I can actually do NFS. Now these are mutually exclusive. I can use NFS or I can use SFTP. I can't have them both turned on. But now we have this new option of SFTP. So a new way to actually go and interact with my block blob storage account. Or Again, my general purpose V2 storage account. And it's just a different way to interact. It's not changing anything about the underlying storage account. Once I write the data there, it's just blobs in a container. It's just now I can interact with it in another way. Now, while there were no additional limits imposed by SFTP, realize SFTP by default is very chatty and it might use a payload, i.e. the chunks, of like 32 kilobytes, which is very small. So what you might wanna to do to optimize performance is I think on Windows, I can actually increase that to 100 kilobytes per second. I think on Linux, it's 256 kilobytes per second. There's a dash uppercase B parameter that lets me get a higher performance. This uses port 22, so I have to have port 22 open. But then I can still use all of the regular firewall networking capabilities of my storage account. 
I can restrict it to certain IP addresses. I can use service endpoints. I can use private endpoints. And this is blob. So if I'm using private endpoints, it's the blob endpoint. It's not the DFS for data lake. I would be using the blob private endpoint to actually go and connect. But as long as I have port 22, I'm good to go. Ordinarily, Blob now has role-based access control at the data plane. SFTP is not using that. So SFTP is gonna ignore any data plane RBAC I have put in place. Instead, what happens is at the storage account level, I create local accounts. So I'm gonna go ahead and add local accounts. I think it's up to a thousand local accounts which are either gonna use a password or essentially a key, an SSH key. And remember, Blob is actually divided into containers. So then for each of the accounts, I can give it permissions to a certain container. So the first thing we have to do is once we've enabled an account for SFTP, we're gonna to have to go and create accounts. So if we jump over, I have enabled this for SFTP, you can see here for this, I have SFTP. And once again, it's just an option when you create a new storage account. Now, once you've done that, what you'll see is under settings, we have this new option for SFTP. So this is at the storage account level, not a specific container. So if I go into there, we have accounts. So I'm gonna add local accounts. It is not using Azure AD. It is not using shared access signatures. It's not using POSIX style ACLs. Today, the authentication and authorization is only via these local accounts. So I can go and add a local account. And I put in a name, so I could say Bruce. And I say, well, do I want it to be a password and or SSH public key? And I can add a specific key source from this. So I can actually generate it, or I could use an existing key stored in Azure or use an existing public key. So I have different options for that key. If I pick generate, then it's gonna go and generate a new key. I'll be able to download the private key part of that. And then it's gonna use the native capability in Azure for SSH keys, which I'll, I'll show in a second. If I select to do a password, it will actually show me that password. I do not get to pick the password. Realize at this point, my authentication is using a password and this could be exposed to the internet. So we don't want an eight character password. So if I pick password, it is gonna generate a huge string that I cannot change. I can regenerate it, but I can't pick that. So it's gonna generate a really, really long string that I can copy and then use but it's not gonna let me set some eight character password. It, it's a huge string it's gonna actually use for that password. And then additionally, I can then say, well, what containers, remember within a storage account, I have multiple containers. Which containers do I wanna give this permission to? I only have one. And then for each container I select, which permissions do I want to give it? So read, I can read file contents. Right, I can upload files, I can create directories, I can upload directories, list, I can see the contents of containers of directories, delete, I can delete files directories, and create, obviously I can upload files if the file doesn't exist, create directories if it doesn't exist, and I can create directories. So those various options. And then I can optionally set a home directory. So if I just quickly, let's just leave that like that and we'll say test key. If I was to hit next and then add, so it's gone ahead. So notice this is the password. It's this huge thing that I can hit copy and then that's what I would use. Additionally, it's generated a key pair that I can now do download that private key. If I quickly jump over for a second and look at SSH keys, this is where they are actually stored. So here, if we look, I can see that there's that test key, I typed it wrong, that I just generated. There's one I generated earlier for my SFTP local John account, 
but also previously I used a key for a Linux virtual machine. They're all stored in the same place. They're stored under SSH keys. I cannot store these in Azure Key Vault. Azure Key Vault does not support SSH keys. So it has this separate storage area for those SSH keys. Now going back to what's actually happening here, so we have now added local accounts. Now for John, I configured a home directory. So I can just connect, but remember these accounts are storage account wide. If I do not set a home directory, so let's look at Clark, where I did not set a home directory, I can't just connect because it doesn't know where to connect to. So the connection will, it will actually fail. So we can see that in action. So if we quickly open up a really advanced looking shell. So if I try and connect as Clark, so over here, notice what this is made up of. So what we can see is, well, it's the storage account name and then the name of the user and then it's just the regular endpoint for blob. So again, this kind of confirms we're using the blob endpoint. So my storage account .blob .core .windows .net. At this point, it's gonna ask for the huge humongous password. So if I copy that and paste, it fails. Home directory is not accessible, I cannot connect. So what I would have to do if I don't set that home directory as part of the connection, after the name of the account, I would have to add in what container I want it to start in. So my container is called folder one. So here you can see I've added in folder one now, along with the storage account, then the container, and then the name. So with that, now I can actually connect. Now I can see, oh look, okay, there's the content I can move around. And there's nothing there in that one, but I could go and look at John, and I can see the content. So that's kind of that, that process in action of actually seeing that data. Okay, so that, that's fun. Once I've copied up the data, then it's just a blob. Now those local accounts I'm creating here, they are per storage account. I cannot share them between different storage accounts. So I'd have to recreate, if there's lots of storage accounts, I'd have to recreate them. It is, again, a thousand accounts per storage account I can create. And once again, today, there's no Azure AD integration. It's early preview, things may change down the line. In terms of the actual algorithm being used, there's a set of different algorithms available. And when the client connects, it will negotiate with the server, well, what, what's the best one we both support? You can see, if we look at the article, it will tell us what are the options. So if I scroll down for a second, these are all the supported algorithms. Now, if you find you can't connect, if you're using a really old SFTP client, it may not support any of these. So the solution would be, you're gonna to have to go and get a newer client to be able to connect. You need to make sure you're supporting one of these to make it actually work. Now, if we go back over, let's test something out. If I look at my containers, here we can see I've just got my folder one container. And within there, I've got two folders. Remember, these are true folders now. Because I've got that hierarchical namespace, these are real folders. And I've got two files in there right now. So what I want to do is upload something. So if we have a quick look, oh, getting my mixed up between PowerShell and everything else. All right, so I've got a johnwick.gif file in here. So let's see this in action. I'm gonna connect now as John. So if we paste over here, so once again, you can see that structure is storage account and then my name, and then it's just the blob endpoint. So I'm gonna connect. Now remember, I have a home folder, which is why I don't have to specify the container as part of that initial username string. So if I look around, I'm already in that John folder. I don't have to do anything else. It put me directly in there because I set that. If I look at my local files, well, there's that John Wick. 
if I put John Wick dot give, it's uploading it. There it is. And if I now jump back to the storage account and refresh, there's the file. There's nothing else I have to do. It's just a blob at this point. And at this point, if I added role-based access control at the data plane, it would be enforced if I connect through other means. It's just not used as part of the SFTP. Now, when I connected, you'll notice it just connected because I've connected to this machine before. But if this was the first time you ever connected, it will prompt you to trust the host key. Now, if you want to be super secure, they are actually listed. So you can go over here, and I'll have the link in the description. It tells you for each of the regions, what is that host key? So you could, if you wanted to, pre-accept on whatever configurations you had on the machine to only trust these to make sure someone's not trying to hijack it or anything else. And again, I'll put this in the description below. But that, that's really it. It's just a very simple service. Today, I have to create these separate accounts. And then at a container level, what permissions does it have? It's not using the native RBAC. It's not using POSIX. It's not using any of those things. Any other activity would just be like a regular storage account. Today, I don't get things like change the feed or notifications because hierarchical namespace does not support that today. But once hierarchical namespace adds that feature, then I would see that when I'm using SFTP as well. Remember, all I'm doing here with SFTP, it's a new way to interact. That's the change. It's not changing anything really about the underlying storage account. It's a new interface, a new protocol I can use with it. So there you go. It is in preview at time of recording. So it's only certain regions. I would recommend to read through the article it talks about some of the kind of the known issues today. So if you actually go and look, it talks about, well, hey, look, the only supported authorization is through SFTP. It doesn't use POSIX, it doesn't use Azure AD, but those are enforced if I access it through other means, which is what it's saying in this note, once it's injected, ingested. It talks about, hey, I need port 22. It talks about the firewall, everything else is enforced. But initially it will connect, but then the actual data plane operations would fail. It talks about security, other types of integrations. It notes NFS and SFTP are mutually exclusive. I can't enable them both on the same storage account. Then it even talks about that buffer issue I mentioned. Because it's very chatty, chances are I'd want to actually increase that buffer size with dash B to a bigger size to really increase the performance of this. So that would be a key point in using this. But that's it. I think it's a, a great new capability. Once it's out of preview, I'm sure a lot of companies will look to leverage this. Again, I expect it to get built on with other types of authentication support outside of these local accounts in time. But if you need SFTP, remember it does support things like private endpoints. It's just gonna use the blob endpoint, so I can have that security, I can use service endpoints. It's just blob. It's just another means to interact. Hope that was useful. Until next time, take care.